Time standards are now based on atomic clocks. A promising second standard is based on pulsars, which are rotating neutron stars, highly compact stars consisting only of neutrons. Some rotate at a rate that is highly stable, sending out a radio beacon that sweeps briefly across Earth once with each rotation, like a lighthouse beacon. Pulsar PSR 1937 plus 21 is an example. It rotates once every blah 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 milliseconds, where the trailing plus or minus three indicates the uncertainty in the last decimal place. It does not mean plus or minus three milliseconds. How many rotations does PSR 1937 plus 21 whatever make in seven days? How much time does the pulsar take to rotate exactly a million times, and what is the associated uncertainty with that? All right, for a level, this is another example of a fairly, a fairly involved problem for a for a level one question, but it's not too hard ultimately. So for part A, which asks us to find how many rotations does it make in seven days, and to get this, we're going to want the frequency. And the frequency of the whole the, the whole pul pulsar rotation thing is going to be well, it's it's once every that many milliseconds, and so it's one rotation. And I'm not actually going to write out that many milliseconds because uh, we're going to be here all day. But you get but you know what that is. I'll just I'll just write it as a variable p, and you know what that represents. And when I say p, by the way. I'm referring to not counting the uncertainty, just the value itself. We want to get this in seconds, so uh, so just to make our value or to make our units easier to work with. So we'll say p times uh, ten to the negative three seconds, and that is our frequency for the whole thing uh, for each uncertainty. And now we want to get the number of uh, rotations that we'll make it in seven days. So for our actual number value then, that's going to be equal to one rotation over uh, p times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. And now we want to do a little conversion to get this into the number of rotations. So if it's one rotation per a number of seconds, we once again Want those value? Want those uh, those units to cancel out? And you want to get it in terms of just the number. So because it's happening over a course of 7.00 days, let's take the number. Let's take seven days, convert that into seconds, and get a value there. So doing a little bit of very easy math that you would have no trouble doing if you managed to figure out all the previous questions up to this point. Seven days is equal to 604,800 seconds. And multiplying these two values together and getting our answer, you get a long answer, you get a long number that I'm going to round down to three significant figures because 7.00 days. And rounded to three significant figures, the answer for this problem would be 3.88 times 10 to the eighth power of rotations. Oops, <laughs> nice handwriting. And that is our, but that is our answer for part A, though. Now let's move on to part B. And what does part B ask, actually? Uh, how much time does it take? Okay, this isn't that bad either. So it's basically using the same formula we have here, except we're given an exact value for the number to work with. We want the pulse search rotate a million times which is the number of rotations we have here, except now we're replacing our time variable with something entirely different. The, the time is the unknown we want to find. We want to find time now. So instead we're going to set the thing, we're going to set our little expression here equal to 1 times 10 to the 6 because that represents a million. And we want a million rotations. So it's going to be equal to, and this the same frequency of one rotation uh, over, you know, the drill the p times 10 to the negative 3 seconds. And the whole thing is multiplied by the amount of time it'll take to give that, to, to yield that many rotations. So t, and that is our unknown. 
Now, doing very simple algebra, just taking this whole thing and dividing by the and dividing the other side by it, or because it's just one over, you could very simply just take p times ten to the negative three and just multiply that by a million, and you'll get what t is equal to. And it's a pretty simple problem there. Although I will say though, I will say though, if you care about significant figures and all that, then this question is actually a little bit annoying, because and here's a little uh, a little bit more detail about uh, sig figs if you're interested, because part B says that we're taking how much time does it take for the pulsar to rotate exactly one million? One million here isn't a measurement. It's not given as any sort of measurement. It's not in sig figs. All the values are significant because it's asking us to find it for an exact value, meaning the million itself isn't going to have any bearing on the amount of sig figs we get in our final answer. And because, uh, meaning the only measurement we actually have to work with here is this whole thing, the number of, uh, the, the frequency of the rotations for the pulsar. Meaning if you really wanted to be technically accurate here with your sig figs, you'd have to write out all the digits of the answer, which is uh, 1 point, or 1557.806, and it goes on for quite a bit of time. But also, it's, uh, given the way the question is worded, it's also kind of debatable whether or not we're supposed to take the pulsar itself as a measured value or, or as an exact value. Uh, but I'll just go on to this point and stop here. But, uh, yeah, so it's a little frustrating if you don't want to write out all these digits. But either way, though, that is our final answer for Part B. I don't think any professor or teacher would yell at you if you rounded this down a little bit. And I don't think it matters a whole lot anyway. Ne nevertheless, though, let's move on to our final part of the problem, which is, what is the associated uncertainty? So for the uncertainty, the associated uncertainty we're given, with the frequency, this plus or minus 3 for the little 5 here, we want to find the associated uncertainty with the rotation of a million times. Now, the, uh, the uncertainty for one rotation is given as plus or minus 3 for the final digit of the value here. But when we're, asking, we're looking for the potential uncertainty when this one rotation has been rotated a million times, that means that, what the implication here is that that uncertainty, if it's at its highest amplitude, I'll call it, then uh, for all million rotations, then the, then the highest uh, uncertainty you could get for million rotations would be a million times that uncertainty. So what we want to do here is we want to take this uncertainty and multiply it for a million rotations. Now, right now, the way the uncertainty is given with the way the problem says it is to this 5 here, which if you count, if you start from the decimal and count all the way back, that is, uh, that is 14 decimal places back. So that's plus or minus 3 uh, times 10 to the negative 14 milliseconds. But once again, I'm going to convert to seconds to make our values a little bit easier here. So that is going to be times... 10 to the negative 3, as we've been doing up to this point, or our previous problems. So our actual uncertainty then that we're going to be working with here is plus or minus 3 times 10 to the negative 17 seconds. And now we just want to multiply this by 1 million. So our final uncertainty then is going to be plus or minus 3 times 10 to the negative 17 times 1 times a million, 1 times 10 to the 6. And this, can, and this gets us a, an associated uncertainty for a million revolutions of plus or minus 3 times 10 to the negative 11 seconds. And that is it for problem number 16.